Is SpaceX experimenting with allowing Starlink customers to roam, connecting far from their service address? We have some evidence that they're actually working on this feature now. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you yet another update on SpaceX's Starlink, and this time it involves roaming. Now, up until now, one of the biggest frustrations with Starlink for any sort of nomad, whether in an RV, boat, or just hopping between vacation homes, is that Starlink will only connect to a satellite if you are within, you know, well, within 5 to 10 miles, maybe just a little bit further, from your registered service address. If you plugged in a Starlink system and you're not at your expected service address, it just won't do anything. It'll stare at the sky and stay searching and will eventually let you know you're at an unexpected location. Just doesn't work. Now, SpaceX has allowed in the past that you can go online at the Starlink website and change your service address, which has made portability possible. And a lot of nomads have been taking Starlink on the road and experimenting with portability. But you can only change your service address if the address you want to change to is an active cell where Starlink has service and it isn't already at capacity. So it's been a very frustrating limitation. Some nomads have traveled for months and not found an open cell where they want it to be and have found Starlink to be a very expensive and frustrating item to be carting around. And an even bigger catch for people who are part-time nomads who have a home base to return to, if you have Starlink service at your home base and you travel away, get connected while you're on vacation and come back, if somebody else has claimed that spot in your home service area, you might not be able to bring your Starlink service back. What if there was a way for Starlink to enable roaming, to let people move away from their active service address and stay connected? Well, we've been noticing in the Starlink debug logs for a long time now, last month or so, there's been a roaming flag that is always set to false, you know, indicating that you are not roaming. And Nobody's got roaming turned on. But just this past weekend, um, a few people have noticed that roaming has flipped on. It says roaming true if you dig down into the debug log for people who are trying to connect with Starlink away from their service area. And in particular, overlander Marcus Tuck has done uh, some extensive experimentation where he's managed to stay connected and try different addresses um, and get connected 100 kilometers away from his uh, registered service area. So, wow, is Starlink suddenly turning on roaming? He's seeing the roaming flag come on. He's able to get connected without any signs of speed throttling, without any uh, unusual obstructions or dropouts. This, this would be a game changer if this is true. So as soon as we checked in with Marcus and compared notes with him, yesterday we actually drove 30 miles ourselves away from our service address to see if our Starlink would go into roaming mode and get connected. And, well, no luck. It's not working here in Florida where we drove to. Um, we've checked in with a few other people who have tried this in Arizona and other places. And again, this is something that it seems like SpaceX is experimenting with. It's not turned on everywhere, maybe not all accounts or maybe not all areas, but well, at least some people are experiencing roaming working in certain areas. And that does change things quite dramatically. Now, what, what might this mean? Well, it probably means you still have a registered service address, but Starlink keeps working when you leave it. You get roaming enabled. But that still, you can only go to places where Starlink has activated their cells. And we know they have not turned on Starlink across the entire country yet. It is broken into cells and only certain cells are turned on. SpaceX does not publish a Starlink coverage map, so it's kind of a guessing game where those cells are or are not. And then, well, when they do actually enable uh, roaming as a feature, it is still completely unclear whether this will just be a feature that works with current Dishy systems and works for all customers with the regular $99 Starlink plan, or maybe there will be roaming limitations. There might be a speed throttle while roaming or data caps, or um, you might only be able to roam into cells that are below a certain capacity level, so roaming might be limited into where you can go into. Um, maybe roaming will cost extra. Maybe roaming will only be available for people who sign up for Starlink Premium, their $500 a month service that gives higher priority access on the Starlink network. Roaming service might actually end up being tied to the truly mobile Starlink dishy that we know uh, SpaceX has submitted to the FCC for our certification. So there's a future version of dishy that is designed for mobility and even use 
while in motion, on vehicles in motion. So maybe they're testing roaming on the residential Dishi now, and it will be a feature only offered on the future mobile Dishi when that is available. So, so there's still a ton of unknown. This is not announced by SpaceX yet. This is completely unofficial. Just it is great to see evidence that actual real Starlink customers are starting to be experimented on and SpaceX is experimenting with roaming. So we're expecting to see more and more firsthand field reports of success or failure with roaming and we'll see does this feature stay turned on for people for a longer period of time? Are they able to connect over a wider distance? So a lot we'll be tracking in the weeks ahead to see if this rolls out and how this turns on. But again, if this does play out, this makes Starlink a much, much more appealing option for nomads who want to take Starlink on the road with them. Makes it a much better complement to cellular service. So you've got Starlink when you're in the really remote places and, well, cellular to balance against the uh, limitations that Starlink has. So stay tuned. We will um, keep our channel and particularly our MIA members over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center updated with our ongoing hands-on testing with Starlink. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.